Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, episodes 15 and 16. And here we go, straight into the new arc. <laughs> Watching the original anime, I don't remember this many bad guys showing up. I remember all those girls that that one guy's commanding, but I don't remember the other guys. So this must be new stuff from the manga that I haven't had a chance to read up that far yet in. <laughs> Yeah, except that you don't have much of an excuse because episode 16 took us to the end of volume 3. I guess I've only read most of the way through volume 2 then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so and now that I've unearthed my manga and started rereading, it was very hard to stop at volume 3 by the way, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is one chapter per episode, and the episode name and the chapter name are the same. Hmm, and so far there's been no deviations? Only minor deviations. Actually, let's save that because the most deviation that stuck out to me so far was episode 16. And let's start with 15, New Enemies, uh -huh. and the abduction of Sailor Mars, and the confirmed death of a human. <laughs> Please elaborate. They killed one of the sisters. You know, the whole spontaneous combustion thing? Normally, you know, people are in extreme peril, they get taken over, they're going to die. But we usually don't see a lot of actual dying in the episode of the week type, you know, Sentai battles. Okay, magical girl battles. Yeah, that's not common. <laughs> Though that brings up the thought of, I really want to watch that one Sentai show I heard about that's supposed to have been targeted at adults, and I still haven't tracked it down yet. <laughs> oh, that Garo one? I think it's Garo something. Yeah. I believe so. All I know is the podcaster slash YouTuber known as Silverquill introduced us to it, and we still haven't tracked it down, even though we're both like, must watch! <laughs> yeah, well, see, it's really shiny, but it still has that thing of, yeah, women are pretty much useless, which is one of the things I like about Sailor Moon Crystal. Yay! Girls can fight! And men are completely useless. Oh, wait. <laughs> Tuxedo Mask is not completely useless. He's the white mage. <laughs> uh -huh. And then there's Chibi Moon. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, has she annoyed you so far? The only part that didn't really annoy me, but I'm like, oh, I completely forgot that she hypnotized the entire family and that Luna is the one that saved Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Moon from being hypnotized. Yeah, she's still annoying, but she's annoying because I think she's meant to be annoying, not because I want to strangle the voice actor. <laughs> I've really enjoyed both of these episodes so far. There's some stuff like, yeah, I don't remember much of this from even this part of the anime because apparently they're compressing a lot and not stretching things out. Because each episode so far has had one of those girls and they get killed? <laughs> I don't remember them being killed in the anime version I watched. I remember them being like purified at the end being normal girls, but... <laughs> Yeah, the the Spectre sisters did survive in the first iteration of the anime, but they are destroyed in the manga, and they are destroyed at this exact same rate, because it's one chapter per episode. Ah, and this episode was kind of interesting when you find out Ray's um, getting more normal, as it were, and used to having people around, and people are getting used to her having her around, especially with that one comment of her going, oh, I'm starting to act like I do when I'm around of the Taylor Scouts. Mm -hmm. So she seems to be opening up to the world a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Though I think that's a perfectly reasonable reaction to being a Miko and teaming up with the Supernatural Club and going, UFOs? Real? But I'm a shrine maiden. UFOs? <laughs> Sounds like something out of an anime. Oh, wait. <laughs> also, when we get the um, battle of that episode, I was like, why didn't we just go with Mercury fighting the lady? You know, water versus fire would have made sense. You know, once we find out who the person is and they show up, start attacking them with water. You know, <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. Have any of you ever played Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> A water type defeats fire type. Yeah, except that it probably wouldn't have worked because Mercury did use her water attack on the fire barrier holding Sailor Mars and didn't do a lick of damage. Yeah, though I think it would have been different against the person themselves. Quite true, but, you know, superhero rules. The leader must always be the one to defeat the villain. Therefore, the villain must always be defeated by Moon Princess Halation or whatever power... Sailor Moon has dug up. I thought it was Moon Healing Escalation. That was the old one. Uh, whatever. Uh, any 
any more tidbits about this episode? If not, we can move on. Um, not really for 15, so let's go ahead and move on to 16. Woohoo! <laughs> With the second of the Spectre sisters and the abduction of Sailor Mercury. And that woohoo was like, ooh, more backstory on my favorite Sailor Scout. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really remember this from the original anime. So her father divorced her mother? Oh, tragic backstory. Dang it. Like, don't worry, I'll be there to comfort... Oh, wait, I'm in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't recall if they brought it up in the first iteration of the anime, but it is in the manga. Minus those cute little flashback scenes where we get young Amy. You just want to, like, comfort her, because, like, you'll be okay, I hope. Well, now you have the crazy girl with the long blonde hair. Yes, that that's comfort. <laughs> And speaking of uh, Sailor Moon, she's lucky that wasn't a real chess tournament or she would have just ended the tournament there. Mm. If you remember the rules correctly, if anyone interrupts the match by doing that, the match is automatically cancelled. Uh, quite possibly, but if you recall, the entire audience was filled with drones, so... That's why I said she was lucky that it was fake. But that was one of the things missing, or at least it didn't stand out to me, in the anime episode. In the manga... Mercury finds out about the challenge from Bertha while she's actually hanging out with like a chess club because they're going, are you even going to have time to compete in the tournament? And you know, here's this news spot and I challenge Amy Mizuno to a, I almost said children's card game. <laughs> <laughs> On motorcycles. <laughs> and there were some other deviations in this episode. Uh, the water problem that Amy fixes at the school by mm -hmm. dowsing without a pendulum. In the manga, it's a bunch of girls who the faucet sprays water out them. Where in the anime, it's a bunch of guys who can't get any water out of the faucets at all. Hmm. Also, in the anime, Bertha allows Amy to see her at that point where in the manga she does not. Hmm. I think that makes more sense in the manga, considering that Amy turns around at the chess tournament and asks her to douse to find Sailor Mars, which makes more sense if you didn't see the creepy girl watching you after you found a water main break. Hmm. Also, the chess match was longer in the anime than in the manga. I know that's an awkward thing to say when you're reading pages versus screen time but you know they worked in more backstory there and more back and forth and actually you know having more of a conclusion to the chess game where in the hmm. manga it was more of oh yes we're playing chess and now i'm going to defeat you wait i thought we were playing chess not anymore <laughs> but i won the bet no you didn't the game's not over yet uh-huh. <laughs> but we were playing chess. This is definitely not chess. I didn't expect to lose. Okay, that still doesn't invalidate the rules we set up. Yes, it does. I make the rules. Pray I don't alter them further. Did you just make a Star Wars reference? No? What Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and speaking of the fight, that was pretty fun. The whole smart separating her from her friends to isolate her on the roof. Pretty sure it was a roof. <laughs> yeah, and then that illusion trick that Mercury pulled, I'm like, I don't remember that. I, I mean, I know that the word illusion is in the attack name, but I don't remember it making doubles. <laughs> they would come handy in other situations, but apparently if you're fighting your own element, it doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. And then we get the dramatic, we're here! Speaking of dramatics, my ring went, oh yeah, there was that cute scene with Tuxedo Mask and... Chibi Moon. <laughs> oh, yes. The whole thing with the tuxedo mask plush and the rose. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want one of those. Why do you think I had to get one of those? Because it was actually canon that it exists. <laughs> and I was like, I can do ventriloquism too. I'm like, well, technically that's not. That's the ball itself speaking. Yeah. So you just made yourself sound really dumb right there. And considering your actual age, which has not yet been revealed. Yeah. Uh, though I like the little bit of information the ball gives, calling her little lady. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a hint that she's maybe older than she appears. <laughs> because you could actually take it as meaning that she's a young girl, or you could actually take it as she actually is an older woman who's little. So does give several options there. 
But since I remembered that, I'd interject it there, and now back to the fight. <laughs> and how I'm, like, at the end going, um, so the moon, you, you might want to fire that thing at Amy instead of the bad guy, because, you know, remember last time how the bad guy appeared out of nowhere and went, when went yoink and took Mars? He might do that again! Oh, look, he just did. <laughs> Yeah, and I was distracted in that moment because, god, the animation of Rubio's mouth at that point. It was like Cheshire Cat, it's like his mouth was huge, his lips were opening so wide. I'm like, that is so weird. <laughs> and I didn't even notice that. And because I was yelling at the screen going, God damn it, Sailor Moon! <laughs> Come on, use your brain! I mean, I know you're using the American name, I know you're Serena and everything, but really? I mean, you know from the last time that he's probably going to appear out of nowhere, right after the lady gets destroyed and take whatever Sailor Scout that happens to be, you know, surrounded by whatever elemental item that they were, you know, surrounded with. So maybe firing your magical scepter of cure everything at one of your Sailor Scouts first would, I don't know, solve that problem first, then defeat the bad guy, you know, since he would be at full force or mostly at full force at this point. <laughs> yeah, or at least, you know, defeat the bad guy and then don't just stand there, turn around and use the attack again and try to break down the barrier. Yeah, because apparently the attack doesn't hurt good guys, it only hurts bad guys. And only if they're pure evil do they get destroyed. <laughs> so yeah, and I mean, come on, because when Mars was captured, Mercury tried her water attack on the barrier, and this time Venus tried her love me chain on the barrier. Oh, is it Venus's love me chain? No, that was her attacking Bertha. It was Jupiter's thunder attack. That's right. It's the one who tries to break the barrier who gets kidnapped the next round. Yeah, that's how it was like, yep, Jupiter's next. <laughs> Though I forgot to bring that up last time we were talking about that 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 attack. Venus love me chain, and I'm like, oh boy. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but see, I've known that translation for a very long time, so I wasn't going to go there, especially since Fifty Shades of Grey just came out a few weeks ago. <laughs> And it's doing uncomfortably well. <laughs> of course it is. The books did uncomfortably well. So of course the movie adaptation is going to do uncomfortably well. And that's a pun if you pay attention close enough. Moving on! <laughs> so, any final thoughts on these two episodes? Oh, I wasn't quite done with things that are being left out. Oh, okay. Because in chapters 15 and 16, I actually think it's chapter 15. Yeah, it's 15 because Mars hasn't been kidnapped yet. Furu-chan knows that the girls are the scouts and knows that the command center is underneath the freaking game center. Also, Mamaru's underclassman gives us a hint of background because we get a flash of him with when he first meets Mamaru and then later when Mamaru accidentally gets hurt and sees himself healing himself and so he's like wondering if Mamaru is even human. We do still have a chance to get some of that in because he should be a reasonable amount of focus in episode 17, but that was very distinctly missing. Yeah, so they still have a chance to fit all of that in, but if I'm recalling the manga layout correctly, it, we started to get a little bit of that in 16. And there was also more of a hint that the leader of the Supernatural Club had an idea that there was a bit more going on, you know, based on some of the comments that Ray made and that she remembers and, oh gee, now Ray's not here. Hmm. So it'll be interesting to see if any of those points are incorporated. Though I think it's kind of easier overall if Furu chan doesn't know that the command center is you know, underneath the game center and that the girls are the scouts. Though it makes things a little easier for them because they can get into the game center at any time and they don't have to explain their presence there. Anything else? Um, I'm done nitpicking the differences between the anime and the manga because it is an adaptation. I do like what they're doing with it. It's just this seems to be the largest deviation so far. And then one small animation thing from... 15 because they showed Mars's full transformation again. I really do not like that pose right before, you know, she has her final line where she's posing against her planet and she has her arms up in her hair. It just does not look right to me. Well, everything seems to be shaping up really well so far. Mm -hmm. Ah, so what were your final thoughts on these episodes? Very much enjoyed both. I'm a little surprised that we haven't seen Emerald yet, but, you know, I haven't come across her in the manga yet either. It's just like, so we have the four Spectre sisters being led by Ruby. Easier to say Ruby than Ruby else makes me think of the taco chain. <laughs> and you have Sapphire, you know, 
using his magic to animate the droids. You have Diamond, you know, leading them all, but definitely just Wise Man's puppet. Why is it that every prince, queen, whatever has a mysterious shadowy figure that promises them power and promises them more power if they get the legendary silver crystal? Because it's the legendary silver crystal and everyone's heard about it. Yeah, but you guys have the malefic black crystal. You don't need the silver crystal. You have the black one. At least the legendary silver crystal isn't in the forest of no return. <laughs> Good point. Because then you're like, how does everyone know about it if it's the forest of no return? <laughs> you know, because I can understand that it, people would know that it's the forest of no return because no one's returned from it. So how do you know what's in it if no one's returned from it? <laughs> well, obviously because it isn't anywhere else, because places that people could return from, it wasn't there. So obviously it has to be in the place that nobody comes back from. <laughs> Otherwise someone would have it. <laughs> Uh, logics of fairy tales. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I liked both episodes. It's nice to have a more backstory on Amy, especially since I never really knew some of this stuff before or don't remember it from the, t the original anime. And I've also never really read the manga past apparently the second volume. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I think I have five. So You have four or five. However many was in the first box set that I was going to steal from you. <laughs> Just because you got a chip art box and stickers, and I didn't. <laughs> well, this has been our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal. Episodes 15 and 16. Thanks for listening. Enjoy Lux's art? You can find more of it on Tumblr and DeviantArt. Want to keep up to date with our podcasts? You can follow us on Tumblr as well. Really like our channel? Please leave a friendly comment and consider subscribing. Really like Lux's art? You can have some of your own. He is currently open for commissions. Links in the description.